When iron nitrides are cut and the surface is then, for example, polished and treated with a little bit of weak nitric acid, various structures start to appear. Now, these structures formed when the once molten iron nitrides cool down and the various metal minerals start to crystallize and exhale from each other, like, for example, tainite and kamacite. Initially, the various nitride groups were classified based on the various structures into, for example, ataxites or octahedrites. Nowadays, we use trace element concentrations in iron nitrides to classify them into the various groups. Two of the typical plots are shown here. On the y-axis, there's iridium in the one diagram and germanium in the other diagram. In both diagrams, there's nickel on the x-axis. Now the y-axis has a log scale, which means that these um, compositions scatter across a very, very wide range, as you can see here. For example, the two AB iron metrides have a range over one, two, three, four, five orders of magnitude. So this is a massive range. Again, others also have large ranges like the two, uh, the three AB, three E and so on. The ranges are a little bit smaller in the germanium plot, um, but still comparatively large because these are, uh, this is a log scale. For example, the 4a have rather large uh, ranges here. The reason for these large ranges is fractional crystallization. All the iron nitrides were once molten and crystallized, and due to the various partition coefficients, these, various, these variations in their trace element concentrations were established. And sometimes the iron nitrides with very large ranges, like for example the 2AB here, are called magmatic irons. And others with smaller ranges are called non-magmatic. Now this distinction doesn't make any sense because all of the iron nitrides initially were molten. But um, it is uh, helpful to know that this distinction is sometimes made although it has no genetic meaning here. Um, now earlier there were also two other groups um, included here. One were the 3CD irons and others were the 1AB irons that would plot somewhere here in this plot and 1AB somewhere here in this and the 3CD somewhere here. And nowadays these two groups are classified into the primitive achondrites, not into the Acorn writes and therefore they are not necessarily displayed here in this plot, but it's helpful to see where, where these fall here. Now there are more than 10 groups of iron metrides classified this way, but there are additional ungrouped iron metrides from which we may have just one or two in our rock collection. So this is how iron metrides are mostly classified, and there's also a certain genetic link here with the fraction crystallization, um, and we don't use any more structural classifications, for example.